Hello everyone, it's Jama Malmi and welcome back to part three of my Kill a Kit series using the Wonderland scrapbooking kit. Today I have seven photos that I'm going to add to this layout. I've got a couple four by six of my <laughs> husband and kids going on the sled with my dog. You can tell that she's super excited. I love this one. This is gonna be a five by seven to fit in this um, five inch circle here and then I've got several three by fours of the sledding adventure to fit on the right page. So I've taken my inspiration from this project too from the kit. I thought that this layout was just a little too busy for me plus I've already used this mountain. I'm not following it exactly. I'm just using it as inspiration and of course I have this sheet here with the die cut circles already cut out so I want to use that and then for the companion page I have a full 12 by 12 of that same pattern that um, I'm probably going to use so it's sort of like a reverse. So this is a smaller one. This is a bigger one. This color is a smaller one. I'll, or a bigger one, it'll be smaller on this side. And then I've pulled in some of the die cuts that coordinate with these colors. Not sure if I'll be using all of these or any of them, but we'll see. And then I still have a whole bunch of snowflakes that came from the die cuts, um, kind of like little ephemera pieces. And I thought that these ones with the little dot detail would go nicely with this dot paper. So let's go ahead and get started and I hope you enjoy. I started out by placing my photos around the page where I thought I wanted them to go because I already had that kind of figured out in my head. I wanted to place these ones on the left in that circular template just to make sure they fit properly and I had an idea of where to put down because I knew once I put them in there, it was gonna be really hard to change that. So I flipped that template over and I put the adhesive on the back side. And then once I was done with that, I flipped it back over and just lined it up over the spot that I wanted to show on each photo. And then I took my big scissors and trimmed around the edges just so there wouldn't be any excess. Even if there wasn't any showing, I didn't want a lot of extra bulk on the layout. So I trimmed off what I could. And then I did the same thing with the other two photos. But I'll be honest with you, as I got these photos in, and even as I kept going with the layout, I wasn't loving it. So today I wanna to talk to you about things that you can do when you really don't like how your layout is turning out. And the first thing that threw me off were the circles. I think because they were spaced differently than I would have done myself, I was trying to work with them because I wanted to work with this die cut with the, that came with the kit, but um, it took a lot of playing around and I, I didn't even show all of that. So I matted the photos that I could on the right because that's typically what I like to do. It helps my photos to stand out. And I found this beautiful charcoal shimmer paper in my stash and decided to mat my big circular template in that as well. But as I looked back, I think it still bothered me because those circle photos were not matted and to me they weren't standing out enough. But again, I just charged on and that is my first tip is to keep going. Don't give up because you can keep adding or changing things up until you're happy. So I had this idea and this is a really cool technique that I, um, that I did, even though I don't like necessarily the outcome of the whole layout, I do really love this technique and I'm happy with how it turned out. I thought I wanted to use the Distress Oxide inks to make those snowflakes pop, add a little bit of blending behind them, but I wasn't liking the colors of Distress Oxides. One was a little bit too peach, one was a little bit too pink. Then I tried the Glacier ink and it was a little too bright. I wanted to keep it a little more muted, sort of peachy. So I decided to just set that aside and I'll come back to that. Then I pulled this title from the sticker sheet and I really liked the You Melt My Heart sentiment because it went perfectly around that photo of my daughter with our dog because it's just such a sweet photo. But that's the next thing that threw me off it is I really wanted to use that but I, I just didn't like how it was fitting. So I end up not using that. So I, again, leave that as I 
work go on to something else and that is my next tip is to if you're kind of stumped on something just leave it and come back to it and go work on something else so it's kind of playing with the placement of these snowflakes adding in that mountain die cut that was left over from uh, one of the other layouts I found that paper that I thought I might line the bottom with to bring in some more paper some more colors um, but it was just a little bit too busy again I was trying to make this layout less busy and it ended up being a little more busy than I wanted it in the end but that paper was just really not working. But it did give me the idea of using kind of a shelf to make that little village and uh, tree scene. So I ended up going back to one of my techniques from my first video and making these little mounds of snow for things to sit on. So um, I ended up cutting them and then inking them with that glacier ink to make them pop. And I also lined some vellum behind it so it has that little bit of softness from the vellum. I added some more die cuts to the page off camera because like I mentioned I played around forever so I didn't want you to have to watch all that. And then I decided that I was ready to add the pops of color behind the snowflakes. And I decided to use my close to my heart ink because I knew it was the perfect match to match the cardstock and the die cuts and everything else. And to me, for this application it was more important than the creaminess and nice blending um, of the distress oxide inks so um, and in the end you can't tell that there's a little bit of harsh lines and it doesn't blend quite as well because it's covered up by the snowflakes and it creates just kind of like that soft glow that helps the white pop off the white and I think that it was a nice touch so as I do that notice on the left page I added some more banners those half circle banners are from the um, the Sawyer scrapbooking kit as well and then the purple ones are from this kit and then the most wonderful time that was supposed to be part of this layout and at the end of this video I'm going to show you what the that layout was designed to look like again so you can compare mine versus that but it's supposed to say the most wonderful time of the year but that doesn't fit for my layout so I just used the most wonderful time and so that's what I ended up using as my title and um, I think that it fit in that space pretty well um, better than that other title that I was trying to make work but um, as I was going these little mounds and stuff and some of the other like the snowflakes I was moving them around and stuff and some of my paper was tearing and so that is my next tip that if you if you don't like how something is looking you need to pull it off and maybe it tears just remember it's just paper you can usually replace it or cover it up or something like that and so um, you know don't be afraid to rip things up if you're just really not liking how something is looking you're not married to it this is it, the great thing about scrapbooking and paper crafting is that you are just working with paper and it's fairly inexpensive so I'm going to commit and get all of these die cuts layered down and as I do that um, I also wanted to mention that multiple times throughout this layout I took a break when I was just kind of stumped or like okay like I'm just I'm having a hard time with this I'm just gonna take a little break and come back with it come back to it it is really eye-opening when you come back with fresh eyes and that can be super helpful so if you're struggling with how something is turning out then just take a break and another thing that I did was I took a picture of it and I sent it to my friends my creative design team friends that are um, usually very constructive with if they have criticism or giving ideas and they often have a really really great ideas so send a picture of your layout to a friend and maybe they can help and give you some ideas that you might not have come up with on your own. So another suggestion I have is to make sure that your colors are repeating and balanced across the entire layout. So I kept adding a little bit more purple. As I started this layout, I hadn't planned to add purple because the original title was pink and blue. But as I got going, I kept adding purple and then um, added some more purple snowflakes from those snowflakes that I stamped and die cut in my very first video and just made sure that those were balanced across the page. 
but I was still stumped. I still was not satisfied and happy. Again, I had taken another break and come back and thought, okay, I need some purple down at the bottom of the page. Maybe I can just add a little ink blending and then maybe I'll like it here. I, that helped and every little bit that I was adding I was trying not to just keep adding too much because I didn't want to just get overwhelmed with all this stuff so I set this aside again for a whole day and I slept on it and I sent the picture to my friends and one of them suggested that I might need some circular elements on the other side of the page since I have those big circles of the photos on the left side. So this all bundled up sticker was on the sticker sheet and it actually was called for in the original layout, but my layout turned out quite a bit different that I didn't think I, I wanted it, but that really helped bring some balance across the page. And then I added these small snowflake circles and that created a visual triangle on the right page. I've got a visual triangle on the left of the circles. And now I feel like everything is balanced. So after I show you the close-ups of this layout and you can see I added some things on 3D foam to add some dimension. Now this is how the layout was supposed to look. I do think that's a little more busy than how my turned out and I do like mine better. Although it still is not my favorite layout and you know what, that is okay. Remember not all of your layouts can be favorites. That's okay. I ended up happy with how this turned out in the end and it's gonna go in my album and I'm gonna be happy that my memories are documented. I've got my journaling down and when my family and I look back at these layouts years from now, we're not gonna focus on the artwork and say, oh, that's too busy. We're gonna just focus on what a fun day that was and how glad we are to have these photos and journaling to look back on. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, hit that like button so YouTube knows to show this video to more people. And while you're at it, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any upcoming scrapbooking videos. Thanks so much and have a great day.